This is a Danger Entertainment Network podcast. DangerEntertainment.net Danger Entertainment Network Podcasts. Isn't that right, Jam Jam? Yes, Father! Previously on the Danger Club Podcast. You must come inside. Father will want to meet you. Beelzebub! What are you doing here? Do you we want to, to consult with some masters of Arcana. Oh, yes, I know some of them. Yes. Oh, you do? Okay. I have a very good relationship with a man uh, there. His name is Winsel Starborn. My friends, welcome back to the boat. You're not coming visit to Absalom? No, my brother. I've got to go find out what happened to him. Good luck. Save the world. The adventure continues. Wednesday. Beautiful. It's, it's, not it's, it's not Wednesday. It's not Wednesday. It's not Wednesday. That's the magic. I'll be honest. I like. I, I normally have a lot of Pramble topics lined up. I've got a few. Um, He's got a know. list. Yeah, I, got, I always have a bit of a list. I'm never sure exactly which one I've got. I, I I still haven't got far enough through The Witcher to understand that. Throw a coin at your Witcher song, and it's making me feel old. And I think that's throw just a coin at your Witcher. Feel, Toss like, a coin to your Witcher. Oh, that is a plenty. Oh, that is a plenty. Oh. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I've been schooled, Joe. How I many, how many more episodes do I have to watch to be able to understand the memes? I think it's, it's, it's about episode three. three. Okay, yeah. three. All right, I can and, do and that. And actually, because uh, uh, I I saw the memes and I was a bit sort of, uh, you know, I, I, had, I was a little bit behind that. It's a really catchy song. It is. Which is why we can Good. still all sing it, even though I saw that weeks and weeks and weeks. I mean, weeks I watched weeks. all of Game of Thrones just to understand we- the memes. Weeks? <laughs> the weems. <laughs> to understand the weems. And the wilding and the waves. <laughs> I haven't watched The Witch yet. Heaven, it's, um, yeah. it's nice. That song right. is... I like it. Gears, you're right, it is catchy, but it's pop catchy. It's annoying catchy. And therein lies the one of the rare modes of genius, I think, in the series. Because Yaskia, down the line, Yaskia isn't the greatest bard. He's just a bit of a hack and knows how to make things popular. Hence why the song is a bit lame if you look at the lyrics. It's intentionally so. It's self-aware. Where, where are you yeah. up to in the Witcher mm. game at the moment, Scott? Kiramets. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the <laughs> Danger Club podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Tito Kiramets, what do you do with your time? Do you play go outside other games. and get fresh air? I play <laughs> other games. Where's no. Fulton? Fulton's gone, oh, man. Fulton's gone. Where's the yeah. Fulton? I think we might have some dangerlings that are going to be... Uh, well, we're, we're yeah. going to get written to. We might yeah. get tweeted <laughs> it's, even. It's true. But possibly he about the leaving of Fulton. It, it is, but he ain't dead. So he's, he's, he's not dead yet. <laughs> no, I mean, he's going to die off screen. He's going to die screen. Please, in some, let in some ways, that makes it worse because it's a choice. We just he's gone uh, by choice. We did yeah. some off-air assigning of equipment and loot that we got in the last couple oh, of games, yeah. and Fulton didn't get any healing potions. So nope. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say we just di- di- divided up Fulton's loot off-air. <laughs> just like, well, he's dead now. To oh, us, yeah, so, that would have uh, been really useful if you just given us all of his useful kit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, well, selfish. That's, that's always what you do in uh, computer games, isn't it? When someone's going to leave your party, you're like, I will take all of your yeah. stuff. Yeah, right. And now. Oh, goodbye yeah. on a merry way and they're like farewell and <laughs> also we, we have no tank now I mean we've got no. we've got we've got hey a very now. skilled fighter hey we've now. got a very skilled yeah, fighter yeah, yeah. dream it's but, over uh, hey now hey now <laughs> when the world comes in I'll fight for you they'll come Thanks. they'll come <laughs> to fuel a war between us but they won't win because I've got a runestone. I'm going to put it on my leather armor. Yeah, <laughs> you do. Nice. You do, and uh, you do have a high leather uh, leather armor uh, armor class. But Caragor does have a habit of going down hey because he's, he just jumps in the middle of all the baddies. Never lost a fight to man nor beast. And did you well, not just hear it? runestone? Two yeah. categories that matter. I think I think we're going to be challenging runestone. that. Runestone. I know. Rune I know. Stone. I'm only concerned for Caragor because he used to have a little little tanky backup and uh, he ain't gonna have that now yeah that's why he's got his runestone instead we've got an alchemist Uh, Ross what does an alchemist do 
He's a mutant. A mu mu muted genesis. This is going to be the rolling joke. This is going to be the rolling joke, isn't it? He's going to be a mutant. He's a teenage mutant. That's why he plays him with a speech impediment because he can't say mutant just. Yeah, that's been you apparently. Mutagenist. What is the word? Mutagenist. 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 A teenage mutant ninja mutagenist. So yeah, he can like he can transform like he's got a bit of everything. He's got got bombs but then he can also improve his like fighting skills and stuff like potions and stuff can create yeah so if we, are we going to be like rolling a dice to see if you wade into close combat alongside Caragor or stay back and toss a grenade into combat toss a grenade, grenade to your combat <laughs> oh weird mutagenis oh weird mutagenis uh, yeah, no, that's, that's a fair shout about the new the new lineup and the new battle thing. Uh, but Caragor, although he definitely valued Fulton being a, a tanky metal thing next to him, he didn't need him for that. He needed Fulton for the shield wall around his heart. Oh, oh God! <laughs> uh, <laughs> we, uh, the thing is, uh, what was what was his max damage, Fulton? If he if he actually hit with his axe, which was rare, but what was his max damage? D twelve. D12 and then plus so we're losing out cool well, calm, no, I'll, tell you mom, what, I'll, I'll tell you what I'll tell you what's just calm. happened um, is that Shania has used some of the loot um, from that last adventure um, bought herself some rune stones Ooh. she stuck them all over her scythe so she now has 2d10 um, I thought we had to Damage for that. Uh, on her scythe. Maybe there's something you're buying in the future because we're still on the boat. Well, no, we're, I, imagine I did you it in Absalom. You're, you're well, not, not in Absalom, Absalom yet. yet. But you... Oh, no, not in Absalom. <laughs> in the future. Uh, we're, we're invested in, in, in future Tamaran. scythes. Oh, is this future scythe? Future scythe. Invested, invested future in scythe 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 scythe. futures. Is that a scythe future? We have oh. to actually go and do that this game, I think. Future scythe it was also is one of my right? favourite electro bands. <laughs> so. We might do it this game. We might do it. Days of future off, scythe. Off. Days of future <laughs> uh, But we haven't done it yet. <laughs> just uh, just talking about max damage there, Foss. What was your max damage? Uh, D12. Okay. Just da, D12. Da, da, da. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> just that, D12, mate. It. Yeah, but I haven't plus Inch strength modifier. What's yeah, strength plus, modifier? plus the strength modifier. So yeah. when we say was that it, and you said yes three times, that was incorrect. Plus so what's your strength, strength modifier? <laughs> <laughs> All right, hold on. Let me get my old sheet oh, out. God, I've put it away. I burned it. it. Uh, anyway, um, look, basically. Yeah, what's yours? Scott? Well, no, 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 I'm just comparing it because it's interesting. Because my mine with my modifier, my max damage would be twelve. Yeah, mine's unless, twelve. Unless I hunt prey, in which in which case it would be twenty. Well, mine's. Uh, D12 plus 4 which is my strength mod so that's not as much as mine yeah whatever <laughs> if I hunt prey which well you never see Fulton uh, again yeah so to be honest it's worth well, yeah. 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 well, yeah. well, yeah. Fulton's not gone F- Future Scythe has a, has a max out of 22 damage Jesus so when are you yeah. going to start wearing some heavy armour bro and get, <laughs> get to run <laughs> there can be no heavy armour unfortunately it's well, not, not a thing I can, can do you wear medium armour though you're a druid right uh yeah. We've got Philippe next to you. New tank, guys. I'm going to go back to my longbow. <laughs> this is perfect. New tank. To be yeah. honest, to be honest uh, th- th- is a druid tank build something worth looking into? You can. I think you I can make a druid a tank build. I don't think Drum's done that with Shania. Because you can turn into a bear and stuff as a druid. Yeah. Well, that's true. I, mean, I have got. A th- I have got a, a thing which is um, uh, uh, animal form. Um, oh, we know. Which can, yeah. That, that, this is different from <laughs> from wild morph. Okay. Um, is that also anyway, different from pest uh, form? Huh? Is that also different from pest different form? Different from pest form, yeah. You've got pest form, animal form, and pest wild form, morph. Pest form, wild morph, and animal form. Yes. Many have all of these things. Forms. Mighty Morphin, Power Druid. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. You can you can use your pet to tank as well. It's harder with a devil monkey because his, his stats, he's more of a damage output. Although, mm. he's pretty tough. Philippe's got some pretty good stats. He is quite tough. He's got, he's got a reasonably high AC. Can you, you know. put armor on him? I don't know. Oh, can he put, can can he put can, runes on him? You can definitely put armor on could him I? if you find really? Yeah. If you okay. find someone who can make monkey armor, like it would, it's it's some work to find it because you know <gasps> you have to do that. You turn into the guy That's from quite a um, good idea. Uh, from uh, Bucky, Captain Bucky O'Hare. Do you remember the big monkey? Another dimension, another time and space, a parallel yeah. universe is falling on his face. When out of the chaos, who else gonna be? Bucky, animal adventurer from SBACE, Captain Bucky, Captain, Captain Bucky, Bucky O'Hare. O'Hare. <laughs> Robots and aliens and toes beware. If you're looking for adventure, well this is it. Join Willie, Dead Eye, Blakey, and Willie. Do it, I said Bucky, Captain Bucky O'Hare. 
If it turns out <laughs> that Disney nice. Corporation bought that cartoon, then uh, that is the end of this podcast. Yeah, I think we've, we've already tipped the boat there, man. <laughs> By the way, I'm just going to doff my cap to uh, to the excellent recall. Yeah, well done. Oh, that wow. song, well, well done. done, Scott. It was really good. And it was a really, it was a really fun cartoon, that, cartoon. that one. I loved it. it I had great. all the toys as well. Did you? Yeah, yeah I had one. I had the little toad guy, the toad general guy. Yeah. What was yeah. his name? Toad, toad man. Toad man. Yeah, toad, toad I had, guy. I had Dead Eye, the four-armed duck. Oh yeah, he had four arms because the ship it used had four like steering <laughs> wheels, so he could, he could literally the only one who could pilot that ship, <laughs> which is lucky they had him really. Yeah, yeah. if he dies, you know they're going to be. It? Yeah, he only one eye. Well. Yeah, the big monkey. Yeah, yeah, the little kid in the monkey armor suit. Yeah, yeah. well, they Willie. needed that because he and accessed the their ship from his room, didn't he? Like, yeah, yeah. Oh. Good times. There always had to be a human in those shows. It was always the disappointing, yeah. the disappointing human. Yeah. Like an That's early the link. As well. That was supposed to be the link hey, to you. The uh, yeah, that was thing, a, you know. there was a silent bit. You could have been like, oh yeah, you know what else is a captain? Captain Gumbo. Yeah, there we go. Well. I'm not going to go with that because I, I love that. I want to go with how much I love the humans in Transformers because they used to wear little jumpsuits with the first letter of their name on it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I said the robots could tell them apart. Mm-hmm. They really went to town with later versions of Transformers where they came away from it. They're like, we don't need any humans in it. We don't need any humans. And then they went back with the headmasters and were like, no, no, what if the humans got inside the Transformers and made them better Transformers? So these squishy, really fragile human beings actually get inside these massive robots and make them more accurate, more dangerous, and more like personable. I was like, that's quite a nice way of doing it. Also, look little bit of cyberpunk horror when someone gets inside a robot brain and then is sort of becomes it like and it gets a bit uh, hr geiger Ooh, in my mind like oh, that's very know? zoids man you ever read that yeah. zoids, zoids. Thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. do you remember zoids? where they feel the pain of the creatures that they were inside <laughs> yeah. is, that, is that what it was that is, I, I remember that's, yeah. zoids the the toy. That, that's the first time that zoids has ever been described as hr geiger-esque <laughs> <laughs> I just remember putting them together for hours and then going zzz, zzz, and then falling over and smashing. Oh, you know that? Great. I <laughs> right. also remember that. Let's Colin, Colin is waving his arm frantically. He's desperate <laughs> to stop this reminiscing. This stop this nonsense. It's 10 minutes of preamble. Let's Enough go. Enough Zoid talk. Let's go on a voyage. So you've boarded Captain Gumbo's vessel for the second time on a long journey to Absalom. Having said goodbye to Fulton Battlestone, having picked up Beelzebub. What's the rest of Beelzebub's name? Bixby the Third. Elizabeth Bixby the Third. Uh, so it's a whole. It's a very new party. So two now. Now two new party members. Only three people left from the original Danger Cup lineup. Wow. Yeah. So, so that's some change going on there. Um, as you make your way, uh, as you make your voyage, you are able to stop and pick up some supplies. So we won't worry about so much about that. Pick up a, a lot of sandwiches to last you on your journey. <laughs> At the same time, do I get my future scythe? Uh, no. <laughs> it's a, it's God a damn it. shop, dude. It's like a convenience <laughs> store. Like a fantasy version yeah, of that. rune stones, right? It's can we, like can we role play this? Carry. Can I get some soggy sandwiches, this Mars bar, and some rune stones for my scythe? <laughs> the mighty power giving me the sharpness <laughs> of the blade of lightning. Give me rune stones. <laughs> I can now cut light. You want, you want what, honey? <laughs> the rune stones. I want the rune stones. I got, you want a lottery ticket? No, no, the rune stones that make my... Uh, I'm so powerful, the slicey thing. I got, I got cigarettes. I got ah, I slice you! <laughs> oh no! I'm, no, it's, I'm sorry. I've been a bit GTA there. <laughs> <laughs> Very. I'll, I'll take some cigarettes. You, get some. you don't smoke. <laughs> yeah, I do now. Oh, yeah. Oh, Fulton's right. left. I'm edgy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, they won't help in the future, you know. Excuse just me. Call me just can call you, me Sandy. Can you get me some cigarettes? I'm not old enough. <laughs> Bobby, you shouldn't smoke. Why not? You're a bard. You rely on your voice. I wonder how I take oh, you know. smokes. Can we, can we just all stop uh. smoking? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you get back on the boat. Gumbo points at yeah. a sign saying no smoking. Caragor uh, narrowly eyes him, but from the underneath the eye patch. <laughs> <laughs> underneath the eye patch. And so you make your way. Uh, stairs. You continue on your voyage. Now, it's going to take quite a few uh, weeks to get to Absalom it's a long old journey you've got to travel across Lake Incarth and you've got to travel along the Selen River down through Andoran um, it's it's quite a long way so we're not going to role play out the entire journey because uh, this is in terms of actual distance covered further than you've travelled um, so far in the podcast including sort of walking all the way to Kermarga then um, travelling from Kermarga all the way to um, 
to Yanderhof where you met Baba, uh, and then Tanmaran as well. So you've traveled quite a long way, but this is actually even further. So we're going to do this in uh, some time jumps. We're going to stop off at different places. Uh, and I have a feeling some of you want to get to know each other a little bit, a little bit like we did on our last voyage episode, way, way, way back there uh, when you were on a different boat uh, and you uh, got to know each other a little bit better. Um, and hopefully you got this, because there's a point in my notes um, where it just says uh, they arrive in this place and in big capitals it says write this bit um, and there is nothing written beneath that <laughs> so uh, I'm hoping we've got a lot of content coming from you guys <laughs> just goes to show the capital letters don't work yeah it, do, it doesn't I'll be honest with you the Formula 1 season has started um, you know so if it looks like I'm not paying attention to anything you're saying and I'm watching something on my iPad then um, you won't notice anything different <laughs> to a usual episode tweet us McLaren <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we've still yet to receive our sticky bottomed cups so uh, I'm although afraid I've noticed to... that Dan's uh, Dan's drink although it doesn't stick to the table still makes the weird fart noise whenever he picks it up so <laughs> yeah. every now and then you might not be able to hear it listeners but every now and then we can just hear a quick every now and then just Dan <laughs> picks up his thing to drink I might <laughs> cut this stuff about McLaren just because I I still want to work there <laughs> Look, uh, I, uh, I, still, uh, I still have a job sometimes I okay. can't see a major F1 team caring that, about the slight <laughs> fart noise that Dan's come back. They, might, they might like it. I they mean, I, I actually suspect it's Dan because the, he every drink Dan has has the same little fart noise <laughs> that comes out it of it. It does, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's just got a bowel break. problem. Yes. Bring it Big up. up McLaren. Unlike the other group has a bowel problem. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure bowel problem. Big up McLaren will stay in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's all of that staying in. I was just making conversation. Oh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were going to cut it. So it's like wheat love McLaren. <laughs> <laughs> just the episode, yeah. like thirty-five minutes. I'll, I'll spend some time doing that as well. So our first stop. Our first stop is a couple of weeks after you set out from Tamarant. So you sail across Lake Incarth. And so we're starving by this point. Oh, yeah. You- yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. Just sorry again. Sorry to hold that up again, but a couple of weeks. I've got 10 rations. Have we taken more on like board? Like I said, or you stopped us spend- at that corner shop. You picked up lots of sandwiches. Okay. I think, um, I think it was like, fair like 300 cheese sandwiches. Let's cross off a bit of silver off our sheets. That's fair. I think. All right, we can, we okay. can fish as well. You I've can- got 20 rations oh God, as well. I can fish. Yeah. Can fish. You can use jam jam as bait. <gasps> that was what we did no. last time. Excellent idea. Oh, that's a terrible <laughs> idea. Last time. That's I don't think feels any pity for this tiny little meat puppet. No one does. I do. I'm not sure even he does. <laughs> yeah. uh, so after a couple of weeks uh, of sailing, fish, living off fish and sandwiches, <laughs> you arrive in the, uh, the port city of Detmer, which is uh, on the coast of Druma. Druma is a bit trading nation, so it's quite a, uh, a busy... Uh, it's not a massive city. It's probably about the same size as Tamron, but it is um, it is well provisioned. You know, a lot of boats co- are coming and going from here, and you put in there for a couple of days to fully supply for the long voyage. Uh, and while you're there, you are able to um, sell off a load of the stuff that you found in the Temple of Rasmir. We've done that off air, sold a load of gems. Uh, you make a load of uh, cash. Shania, you are able to find a blacksmith, and you are able to get that future scythe. I go with Shania. Find. Okay. Right. Okay. Um, so uh, yeah. Um, okay. I have uh, all this. This is like hundred gold pieces. Uh, stick all the runes that you can on uh, on on this. Make him into a badass for me. Okay. Yo, dog. Don't worry about that. Okay, that's great. Uh, also, I just wanted to uh, like. Do you see, uh, know what things are worth? You know, like if I've got because you are into in metals and things, yeah. Oh, do you know the intrinsic value of anything? Yeah, man, I yeah. know the intrinsic value. Yeah, of everything. yeah. Okay, so like this ring that I'm wearing here, what, what kind of, what you, how much you think this is worth? Mm. Well, it's worth. I mean, it's worth a lot in sentimental value if you're going to sell that ring. I'd give you, I'd give you forty-five silver pieces for it. Forty-five silver pieces. Okay, yeah, yeah, I mean, if it's, that's good to know. That's what it's worth to you. That the ring that I found and gave to you. That was a gift. Oh, I, I mean, I. Well, no, I mean, I was not going to. I was just, I was just worth wondering. Knowing the price, and yeah, you're just wondering what it was. Like, well, I just, I just, you know, you're just doing literal window shopping. That's what you're doing. Shania. I mean, like, you know, just in case, because you know, maybe it's that we run out of. Uh, we don't. What if, what if we're in a situation where we are, you know, in we are desperate. the richest we have ever been, and you're looking at selling the ring that I gave you for forty five silver pieces. Why oh. don't you make it twenty, Velda? <laughs> Hey, hey, hey come on, don't come at me like this. Why, do you, why is it that you always, whenever we get, go on these boat rides and things, you always end up arguing together? What, 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 what's going on? It's true, actually. So, it's something about the sea, isn't it? So, you I don't me? know. It's me. I, don't, I, I just, I feel like, you know, when we're not battling people, it's like uh, when we're in like peacetime, you, you want to make battles with me. I think That's this what you're is saying, something. Is that that we always need an enemy. They're like our fluffer. 
Yeah, yeah, you know. And then, and then. <laughs> All right. Well, so we find someone soon because otherwise we'll. we'll, we'll if you don't know what a fluffer is, then. <laughs> so, I mean, don't yeah, go. Tweet us, fluffers. Um, <laughs> don't need them anymore, do we? Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, I see what you're saying. You're saying that uh, that we have battle fluff problems. Yeah, right. I mean, yeah, uh, maybe, 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 that, maybe that's a you bit know, uh, yeah. it's, it's, it's true, you know, when we're chasing people down and getting to the bad guys, that is uh, when we have the most smiley eyes time together. Yeah, and when you were covered in blood that one time, gosh, and I, you look like a warring bloody warrior goddess. That is when I feel at my most powerful. Oh, yeah, you looked it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, we're talking about it now. What? Oh, sorry. Selling, you're selling uh, okay, the okay. ring if you want. I don't care anymore. The, yeah, the no, I'm going to keep standing. it now. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling uh, much enamored with it now. I, I would not get rid of it for nothing. Do you know what? It was a gift I gave to you. You can do what you like with it. It's up to you. you, you you've got the agency here. It's, I, it's I appreciate that. And the freedoms that you have given me with it makes me want to keep it more close to my heart. Oh, so it's quite... Oh, it's quite... Yeah, you know, I know. A bit give and take there, wasn't there? Oh, I don't know what to do. Oh, I think you're nice. balance now. Oh. Anyway, sorry. Um, <clears throat> are you... Um, hey, can you stick this room stone on me, leather armor? Sure, dog. You're very it's confident, a, aren't it's you? A, uh, it's a halfling. He's Neither of us are dogs, by the way. He's I don't a know really about jacked halfling. Uh, he's wearing a sleeveless vest. Um, <laughs> is that a chile? <laughs> yeah. And like leather, and like leather chaps. Um, leather chaps leather in, a, in a forge? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that is... This powder powder is not going to solve that <laughs> for you, mate. <laughs> he's bold. It's like a, it's a professional ruining place. There's like there's like weapons up on like racks with halflings underneath them working on them, like hammering runes into them. There's sparks <laughs> flying everywhere. Uh, they've got a paint shop in the corner where they're spraying up weapons uh, for different colours. Uh, they, they've got a wizard casting colour spray on them all, just to, <laughs> so they come out and ro- looking real nice. Can Bubba into the shop? Like Bubba can come in the shop. Yeah. All right, Bubba comes in. Oh, all right. Oh, all right. How's it going? Yeah, yeah, it's going we're, really we're well. Doing well yeah, 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 we're having a nice yeah. time. I didn't yeah. realise you were here. Um, so I've got a little bit of work for you, mate, if that's all right. Yeah, what you got, dog? I've, I see my ukulele, my banjo sorry. Yeah. Um, or, or ukulanjo, right? Carrigal? What? You call it a ukulanjo, don't you? I thought I called it a banjo oh, right. Let's call the whole thing off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can I... I want to put, like, an axe on the side, like an axe blade on the side... Of my uh, of my uh, and I'm going to show Dan a picture like that, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> For our listeners, <laughs> it's a picture that Colin's found of like a guitar with just a random axe blade stuck on the bottom of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's got like Simpson style writing underneath. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It has. so is- some, someone's actually come up with. Uh, you can find this on Pinterest, which is called a ukulele hand axe. He, he looks at you like you, all of his dreams have come true. Can Bubba like <laughs> like have a drawing <laughs> that he's made? <laughs> like, oh, I just want to see if I could like put an axe blade on the side of my ukulele because it will make it like like a little weapon as well. Uh, yeah, you got it, dog. He takes the uh, he takes the uh, ukulele from you and uh, gives it to one of his guys. Whispers. The, the guy looks at you and is like. <sighs> <laughs> his eyes go wide and he just throws up the horns for you how uh, much do you think that's going to cost it's going to cost you uh, 10 silver pieces you got that nice one that is metal AF Bubba thanks how much about yeah. rune stones the rune stone uh, the rune stone 20 gold pieces yeah I thought that would be quite pricey wouldn't it alright fair well, uh, can I go with you Sure. What do you got to offer? Yeah, go on, Nate. <laughs> That's a, an intro. Can I haggle with you? <laughs> <laughs> to know, well, I'm in a new place uh, and a new region, so I just thought I'd be clear. Um, how about 18 gold pieces? Because, mm. uh, you know, there's three of us. We're all mates, actually. We all know each other. Yeah, we're all pals. Otherwise. Your pals. Well, I tell you what, your buddy here is putting in a pretty big order. Go ahead and make a diplomacy check for me. <laughs> and, uh, you know, maybe I'll do that. 17. Yo, dog, that's a pretty good score. Okay. <laughs> cool. Hey, I like this place. So you see that? You see, you see I, I spend 100 gold pieces, and so you get yours for cheap, you see? See, I am just all give. All I do is give. All I do is give to you fucks, man. Fucks your fucks. She storms out. She God, I, I, like I that. fancy that woman <laughs> so much. <laughs> the halfling stood there with the, with the scythe. I mean, like, did, did she want... Yeah, we, she wants it. Can we keep this for her? Or, uh, yeah, I mean, well, how long does it take? No, she storms back just... in. Give me the fucking size. <laughs> <laughs> Takes it. <laughs> Told you. Storms exactly. back out again. She She's fiery. Did you really pay 100 gold pieces for that? I did. <laughs> oh, wow. <okay. laughs> wow. Um, so you cool. now have a plus one striking scythe. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is covered in runes. 
Yeah. Yes, yeah, it's, it's going to do some damage if I ever use it. You go outside to where uh, where Philippe is sort of sidestepping closer to Jam Jam. Jam Jam is sidestepping away from Philippe. They're just kind of doing this around in front of the shop <laughs> uh, until you get back. Uh, and you all head back. Uh, having sold all your stuff, do any of you w- want to pick up anything else from the shops while you're here? Uh, very quickly, um, how much would a bit of armour for a monkey be? <laughs> Is there a person that would do such a thing? I mean, it's got to be those guys. I mean, it's those guys who literally just stormed out. I'd take a hand and leave it there. Sorry for my outburst. I'm feeling bad. Any chance you can armor a monkey? What's monkey armor, yo? If you can do that kind of thing. We can make you some monkey armor. Do you monkey know how to use monkey armor? Uh, Philippe, I, you know, uh, gesture to Philippe to show him what he's got. Uh, Philippe just kind of flexes and then shrugs (laughs) and looks at you as if, is that what you want? (laughs) I mean, he's probably not so trained I mean, to use armor. I imagine. I don't know. He, he's he's trained. He's trained. He is trained to protect me. This is his like. Yeah, this is his like function. Never worn armor before. Might be clunky for him. He, he'll get used to it. It's okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right? All right. You seem quite assessed on this. Yeah. yeah. And he, yeah, you're going to explain that he can't swim or climb what? trees. But, but I mean, well, it's, not, it's, it's going to be like leather armor. It's not going to be fucking. But it's a fuck you, fox. <laughs> Stop fucking with my monkey armor. <laughs> So, uh, the monkey armor so monkey armor will cost um, four times the value of the human equivalent of that armor to have it oh specially shit fitted okay, I might not be able to afford so, but how much uh, so it depends what kind of armor you want I don't know just like some fucking just, leather armor <laughs> you just keep your saying dog, monkey armor over and over again monkey armor, monkey sounds armor, like you really armor. know your armor <laughs> I don't know armor I'm a fucking druid I don't know shit about armor <laughs> that's why I'm fucking getting stuff for the monkey okay well I'll tell you what we'll try and I guess we'll try and make you some monkey armor, but uh, I, weirdly, I don't have the stats for monkey armor to hand. So, uh, <laughs> sorry, we should have done this off air. It's, I just, <laughs> no, it's no, fine. no, this is this is quite fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. I, you know, I only said I only said let's do anything unbelievably weird or complicated off air. Um, so we didn't use the book. Just, um, but you know, monkey armor. Just each and I have extra weight. I mean, he does like climbing trees. I mean, that's just that's yeah. No, I know. But if we get just like some leather stuff, you know, just to cover his bits and his bibsies, that might be. Okay, yeah. Yes, that you know was the saying? name of my shop. I think what it's good. the? Oh, well, you, you were the ship, weren't you? <laughs> oh, yeah. That's funny. Fulton had the exact same train. That was <laughs> so strange. It was almost like he was in the room. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> so he's. Uh, so you want leather armor for a monkey, do you? Or, yeah, I mean, you know, I've studied like, leather armor. Um, maybe it depends I mean like you know obviously um, sorry <laughs> what are we doing it? obviously uh, like you know his dex sort of adds to his AC right yeah, what's his dex bonus his dex bonus is plus two plus two so you can any of the light armors will be fine okay yeah um, so just something like that okay uh, so in that case uh, go for some studded leather 12 gold pieces will buy you studded leather monkey armor <laughs> perfect <laughs> I'm buying it <laughs> <laughs> the halflings go nuts over the prospect of making. <laughs> do they measure him up? Yeah, do they measure him up? Is there like a. <laughs> Is he- Philippe, be a good monkey, get measured, okay? A halfling comes out with a tape measure. They get him to stand on a box and put his arms <laughs> out. They measure him up. Uh, they try lots of different things, and then they forge. There's a lot of beating of hammers. <laughs> is he is he going to get like a flick knife and he's going to start greasing his hair back? I'm just imagining like I you know he's going to be a rough so. teddy boy kind he's of. He's going to start smoking as well, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he's going to be smoking breaks of Caragor. Yeah. Uh, like so Philippe now- Kanicki. <laughs> <laughs> Philippe is now wearing <laughs> leather armor with metal, little metal spikes all over it. Uh, the spikes have no effect, um, but they are like metal studs. Uh, so what does that add to his AC? Leather armor. That gives him. That gives him a plus, plus two, two to his armor yes. class. Unbelievable. Oh, Philippe looks quite badass now. <laughs> his, actually, his armor looks very similar to mine. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I was asking because it looked like the same. Hey, Philippe, do you want to start a gang? <laughs> <laughs> he, he looks it. He sti- Philippe does not speak common. No, I know. So Philippe, Philippe has no idea what you're saying. <laughs> can I make a? Can I make an animal handling check? See if he wants to start a gang with me. All right, then go ahead and make a. <laughs> I can't make an animal a handling check. check. Nature check. Oh well, uh, luckily, as a ranger, uh, I think you'll find that I am. You speak the words of the wild <laughs> to Philippe. I am completely shit at it. Uh, how would a natural one do? A, na- a natural um, one. How would a natural one do on that? You situation? are now in a gang war with Philippe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not actually sure how it work out. <laughs> oh, I, don't know. I just uh, don't know what his next move's going to be. So inscrutable. 
<laughs> you head back to the boat and uh, continue your journey. Uh, the next stop off we have um, is actually a slightly, um, uh, it's a slightly tricky one. So you you have to go east along Lake Incarthen. Uh, so you pass uh, by uh, the Isle of Terror is to the north. And you know that is where the Whispering Tyrant lives. You do not um, pass anything particularly nasty for you stay very close to the shore gumbo is very cautious after the last time um, and just as you are reaching the east uh, of lake incarth at one morning you see a sail uh, on the horizon uh, you can see some tattered sails fluttering uh, as you see a large vessel approaching it's just a, a galleon sized ship so much bigger than captain gumbo's boat uh, and it appears to be uh, heading uh, the opposite direction to you so it is heading westwards um, what would you like to do all of you who are on it captain we're, we're the smaller more maneuverable craft i think it's the right of the waterways that we're meant to move out of its way yeah i would agree we must move out as if maybe even just pull over all together and let it pass yeah not maybe over, it's not start up road well, just move out of the way yes but i mean remember that uh, it's got tattered sails so um it's probably undead Oh, yes, John, come on. Oh, Maybe not. we all hide. Have they made us? Well, yes, but they went on a barge. I, well, hopefully not yet. So that's what I'm saying. Maybe we should like try to get the hell out. Like, all right, pull away. Let's try and hide the boat or something. We could try paddling. I'll give you a paddling. Oh. <laughs> oh, uh, come on, we made me blush. Uh, oh, it's right. like well, being in the puddles again. <laughs> <laughs> Let's pull pull out out of bow range. And see what they do. Yeah, okay. After we, uh, the uh, gumbo veers the boat away closer to the shore, um, the ship keeps coming. So it is heading sort of towards you anyway. Um, it does not alter its course at this point. It's are we, Velda, I'll clear you, I'll show you that that's an undead boat. Well, it's got, got tattered sails. How tattered are the sails, Dan? Uh, on a scale of 1 to 10. Um, <laughs> Sort of one, one being undead. one being sort of perfect sales uh, and ten being my patience with this question. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could have answered it about ten seconds ago. So uh, <laughs> this is all on you, Dan. About, about an eight. About an eight. So they're very tattered. Yeah. In that case, it is sailing with tattered sails. So uh, that would indicate magic and undead. That is a fair assumption. Uh, do we? Yeah, the, believe the, the, uh, the shore is what? What land? The shore is, is that? Uh, the. Um, the southern shore that's still Druma at the moment um, so it is a it's it's just a uh, countryside uh, it's a there's a beach there's some trees right by it oh no we I like Druma we got some nice stuff there and the halflings are nice we, we kind of owe it to people to not have them have a load of undead pirates turn up do you know what I mean we should at least see what they're doing if they're here for hostile intent then we do have a duty to stop them do you not think? I mean, if they're undead, since they're definitely going to be hostile, so we have to fight them. I mean, there's a galleon, though. There's going to be at least like, hundred of them on there. I mean, this is this is going to be a big fight. Although it's going to be huge. Uh, to be honest, if they if they border this lake, they must have some sort of defence strategy in place. Surely, that is a good point. Actually, they, this must have happened before. I mean, uh, you know, the, the last place we went, Tamran, was was. Let's pockmarked and battle scarred, wasn't it? Let's sail out of the way of them, and when they make landfall, we'll see what they do and see who they exactly they are. And if it's suspicious, then we should try and do something about it. But if not, we'll just bugger off. We'll bark it. Okay. okay How sounds far away good. are they? Okay, I like this plan. How far away mm-hmm. are they? Mm-hmm. Uh, they are currently about two hundred feet away. Okay. So they are they're closing, but they're um, you. So you gumbo brings the boat in towards the shore. Um, does anyone have? Uh, is anyone trained in survival? Yes. You might be able to help guide Gumbo um, as he sails close to the shore to try right, and find that's it. All the road of Gumbo. Safe. Hard to port now. 17. 17, okay. You guide Gumbo uh, in close to the shore where there are lots of jagged rocks um, and you pull the boat in sort of amongst them. Um, Gumbo's boat is quite small so it is able to manoeuvre in them. The larger vessel alters its course as it gets closer uh, and starts coming towards where your boat is. I think they're looking for us, lads. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I think they are. Yes, I think they are. Yes. Don't worry. Okay. I shall look. Uh, as he does this, um, <laughs> a third eye opens on Beelzebub's uh, forehead. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> I was expecting this moment to be a spiritual mystic thing, but when it's coming from you, it just looks weird. And I use Eye of the Arcane Lords. 
Why is it so Tell us about Eye of the Arcane Lord. So, you open an iridescent third eye upon your forehead. The eye can remain open for one minute. Uh... You, while your eye is open, you can gain the following benefits. You gain the effects of Detect Magic, uh, Arcane Innate Spell from your Arcane Sense at the start of each of your turns without needing to cast a spell. You gain Dark Vision. You gain plus two status uh, bonus to Perception Checks to seek undetected or hidden creatures and to your Perception DC against Hide and Seek. Okay. So can I... Yeah. So it doesn't give you the ability to see long distances. No, but I can I can use my perception to seek undetected or hidden creatures. Okay, go ahead. Give us a perception check. But what use is that going to have now? Because I just want them. to see what is, what is on the but, ship. But it doesn't... Okay. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> Uh, hold on, sorry. Okay. Uh, my concern with this plan is that we, we've detected them. Yeah, they um, and they're coming towards us. And this, this doesn't other. give you any sort of zoom sight, so... Yeah, it does. N- no, I thought... You just have to believe in yourself, James. <laughs> okay. You just have to say say something is true. 18. An 18, okay. Um, so you can see there are some figures on the deck. It's hard to really make out. With an 18, it's hard to make out exactly what they are from this distance. Okay. Um, should we try pulling away from the shore and see if they follow us further? No, I think we should yeah. stay here amongst these jagged rocks where it can't come and board us. But they'll still be able to get close to us and be within range of whatever weaponry they have on there. And whatever weaponry they have on a galleon will be out. Will be more powerful than my longbow. Yeah, and we're not going to be able to move if we can't go anywhere. You know I mean? Yeah, we'll okay. on the shore and we'll lose the boat if they, yeah, if they okay. ram it or if they destroy uh, it. Yeah, let's try to move and see if they follow us. Gumbo, yes. are we faster than a galleon? Mm, maybe. The wind is with us. Maybe if we wait until it comes in real close, we might be able to get away. Do any of you have any skills that would be useful in sailing the boat or knowing ways around through the waters? Yeah, I can. I mean, I've got. A, I'm trained in survival, so I can help him with that. I could do a little lore check as well. Well, I, I mean, I can. Uh, I can give you guidance. I I do have something now. Out character, Dan. Uh, yeah. Would you allow me to use gust of wind to inflate and push us along? I would. That's a good idea. That okay, very yes. good use okay, of that fine. spell. Good. Do um, yes. you want to get a bardic lore check, Baba, yes, to see if you uh, can uh, sort of work out the winds? Uh, and can I? Um, I'll uh, use. I'll use some guidance. Imbue him with guidance. All right, so, so it's a plus, plus one to that. One. All right, so that's twenty-four. Twenty-four. Do you want to get a survival check to find a way out of these rocks? Eleven. Eleven. Okay. So, the uh, the survival check is not great, but the law check is very good. So, Baba, you get a fear, you sort of test the wind. Um, mm-hmm. You've been sailing before, and you have an idea. Um, you have an idea of the, how to sail um, through this. So, you wait until the ship gets closer. The uh, large galleon starts coming towards the shoreline where you're nestled, and as you get close, those of you on deck can see that there are figures stood on the deck and they are skeletal um, not like the other ones they're wearing rags uh, and they are all fixed on your position watching the ship does not look like it's able to get to the uh, the rocks where it, uh, where you are um, however they it does pull sort of alongside uh, you see drop anchor down into the water uh, and a few of them uh, after a moment a few of the figures crawl up onto the side of the boat and you see them beginning to crawl down the anchor chain towards the water excellent now they've dropped anchor now will be the time to bark it now yes it would yeah let's go are you ready to are you ready, all the sails set sails sails are set captain wait no I'm captain sails are set captain thank you captain I right. have to get us out of here alright Good. Then you guide. I'm going to cast gust of wind. All right, Amazing. ready? Nice one. Just okay. just before Vel does that, what? How far away is that galleon from uh, us? That galleon uh, galleon is about uh, sixty feet away from you. Excellent. Then I would like to ignite uh, uh, an incendiary arrow and just shoot the ship with it. Any, okay. Literally anywhere. Okay. Go ahead. You make the attack roll. Um, do you need to make a roll for gust of wind, James? Uh, no. It's a safe. It's DC a safe. To, safe to, to to okay. Cool. That's over. fine. Because well, I'm so. attacking a large gargantuan target. Do I get any bonuses? It, it will be. A affected by its AC. So okay. you just make the attack roll. And, uh, so you, if it hits. Uh, 25. 25, yep. Yeah, you put an arrow onto the deck, uh, which is on fire. 
Um, it burns for a little while, um, but what happens is a few of the uh, crew on it appear and stamp out the fire quite quickly. Uh, you get the feeling there are quite a lot of them on this thing, and as they start, you start seeing the figures dropping into the water and start seeing them moving towards the boat. Right, time to leave. Behold it's my wind! <laughs> and I cast gusts of wind at the sail. <laughs> Does he always say that? No, I don't know. I've never said it before. Ah, my wind! Velda <laughs> <laughs> uh, casts a gust of wind into the sails. Bubba, you guide um, him along the shore, out of the rocks, uh, and suddenly the boat, the boat jerks forward uh, and rockets out of the, uh, the little cove where you are, past the galleon, which is still at anchor, um, and away down the shore. Uh, the galleon, you see um, the figures trying to swim back to the boat uh, and starting to try and bring uh-huh. anchor up. But by the time they manage to raise the anchor and start trying to turn the boat, they are already disappearing behind you, and you leave them far behind. Yeah, yeah, nice work, Carl. Fight. Good, that was working as a team. Well done, everyone. Yes. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. They were coming for us, though. Um, Beelzy boop. Yeah. So, what's that thing on your forehead? Yeah, it's my uh, keen eyeball. Did it help us at all? Well, you know, I'm just trying. Well, what you did was just fart onto a fucking sail. That's you quite, shut up. I mean, I, I quite useful. I mean, it was very useful. All yes. right. Otherwise, we'd have still be. Do you want but to I go agree. to Absalom? Yeah, I mean, I agree. Maybe not. Let's not jump on. No, uh, no, no. I, I was no. I was, as, as, as an arcane magic user, I was just curious as to what the eye was yes, all about. Yes, it is something I learned when I was in uh, uh, next. Oh, good. <laughs> Well, perhaps we can talk about that over the journey. Yeah. So we're going to fast forward uh, another uh, another another week or two uh, as you uh, you manage to leave Lake and Carthen behind. Uh, it gets a little bit dodgy now because you pass um, as you get to the west. You pass quite close to Rasmaran, uh, but you are not forced to travel too close to it. Um, and you soon you'll make your way to the Selen River, where you'll find yourself travelling alongside the nation of Kyanan, which is the home of the elves. So there are huge trees overhanging the river uh, as you run along here. Ancient, ancient looking forest, a sort of mist hanging over everything. Occasional little notes of light flowing around. If you imagine sort of a Tolkien elven forest, that is the kind of place you are uh, travelling through. Mm. Uh, and you are sort of moored up one evening um, enjoying more sandwiches. Um, <laughs> And fish, um, as you sit yeah. by. Does anyone want to have a chat with one another while you are moored up? Sure. Up yeah. Then? So, has uh, anyone else uh, slightly disturbed that uh, that that um, galleons that we saw about a week ago? They, they seem they seemed like they were specifically set on us. It's you know, I, I, I feel like the things that we are carrying with us is making us a target. I mean, I, I you think I, it's the thing. I mean, as I yeah. said before, I think the shard does emanate a huge uh, magical signature. However, we did sail that lake before, and I think there was just a lot of undead boats attacking everything apart from the uh, masks of the living You think it's co- coincidence then, that they are it, specifically coming for us? It could be. We could have been unlucky. I'm not sure. Yeah, they tend to. They were sort of raiding before. We know that. I mean, I like to think that if they did know that we were carrying a shard and they directly wanted it, I, I imagine that it just bamf the lord of vampires and spectres aboard deck do you know what i mean like that'd be a bit more high priority but it did seem like they're coming for us i reckon they were just raiding you know what i mean okay okay well all okay the, then the, maybe i will i mean should i, you know, I, 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 I worry do less think, but you know no no I, I i think we should all be worried i think we should all keep it i just close I, I think certainly we must be on high alert uh with with this item with us we are in uh what are, item are you talking about Shouldn't you be steering the boat? Going, no, we, st- <laughs> we, st- we stopped at the side. I don't want to be steering the boat. No, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's at the steering boat. I wish someone was steering the boat. You right guys now. never include me. No, we, we're it's gonna have own, to tell him sooner or later. No, no, Captain Gamble, we're not. About because all it's the for sandwiches. Your, it's for your own safety. What? Exactly. I like safety. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I, we, we I'm might be still fit. a bit miffed about Fulton. We haven't spoken about it. It's been like three yeah, years no, and we haven't talked about him leaving. I know exactly what you mean. I, uh, I feel like there is, uh, there is a piece of, of, of our, our, our puzzle missing. We, had, we, we were only just, we were reeling from, from the loss of, of a former teammate and of, uh, we were only just healing from this and then suddenly a, uh, 
uh, another one disappears. Um, it's not dead. Very unsettled. No, no of course he's, no, he's not, not dead. I know. But I, I do think that ever since he got the news about his brother, a part of Fulton left us that very moment. And now yeah. I think the rest of him's followed because he's, he's always... It affects him very much. And, uh, you know, he's never, he'd never quite been the same. And he I, has to do this. I had to tell him, Beelzebub, we we worked out that it was his brother that had died, so I had to tell him. Yeah. I couldn't keep it's a pity it. To you two stuff. didn't get to talk. Cause I think yeah, it really helped him on his quest. How did he uh, take it? Not very well. We tried to kill everyone in a bar. Yeah, he cried. Oh. Um, and then he, I mean, totally understandably, the man that lost his brother. Yes. Shot up a teenager as well. He, he, he yeah, killed he a teenager. Did, yes, kill a young lad and, yeah. and left him oh. just sort of hanging on a post. Pretty heavy oh. drinking. He did a lot of heavy drinking. Yes. Yeah. Oh. I mean, he started to get better. Like, yes. While he, oh, he mashed know. someone's head into jam, didn't he? As well. That was. Yeah. Yes. When did he do that? Oh, he did that before asked as well. For me. <laughs> oh, no, no, jam, uh, jam. No, that's okay. It's, I'm in the shower. <laughs> what? <It> burns. <laughs> but how do we? Do we have a shower? shower? Why do you shower? I've been taking towel baths this entire time. Oh, well, then I'm not telling you guys about the shower. Got running hot water? Yeah. How? Well, you got, well why do I take the water out of the lake and I put it in the back and then I heat it up over a candle and then I jam a hole in the back with a dog slicer. And then all the water come out on top How of it. How many buckets have you got? Yeah. Mm, yeah. No, there's a lot of buckets on the ship. Uh, I throw them overboard once I'm done with them. Because, you know, no good having a bucket with a hole in it. That's a lot of waste I right mean, there. But, I mean, you, know, you could reuse, if you're doing the shower idea, you can reuse the bucket. You, you've invented yeah. the one-use economy before anyone <laughs> else. <laughs> just, just, just get a stopper, mate, and you can reuse one bucket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is wow. a... Wow, Plan. you guys are pretty smart. Also, how long does it take to heat up a metal bucket with a candle? Yeah, right. <laughs> how <laughs> you got time for that when you're steering the boat? <laughs> Quite a while. I mean, I, you know, steering the boat, it's pretty easy to steer. I can sort of do it with one hand and then I hold the candle with the other. <laughs> Okay, I'm so going to help you do that from now on because no, on. also if you've left a bucket every time we showed, you've left a trail to where we are. <laughs> it's a trail of underwater buckets, zombies. Yeah. We're walking along the thing, right? I could just follow the bucket. Hang on a moment. Hang on a moment. So you've got one hand on the steering wheel, the, the whatever you call it. To That's control. right. You've got one hand holding the candle. Yes. Who's holding the bucket? Jam jam. That's why he gets to use the <laughs> shower. Jam jam. The tiny bacon so you, you boy guys, is holding the bucket. You guys have uh, made a nice bond together, yeah? Yeah, we're pretty we're pretty tight now. Okay. Well, is this right, Jam Jam? Uh, no. <laughs> Did I remember? Makes me hold his buckets for him, Father. <laughs> My arms are so tired. <laughs> <laughs> and then he makes me have showers. And the water, it, it runs into my veins. <laughs> it is seawater. It's salty, Father. <laughs> Yes, you should probably... Uh, no more showers for you, Jam Jam. Oh, but I feel guilty after all the effort he's gone to. Don't feel guilty, Jam Jam. You are your own person. Very well. I'll dab myself dry with this towel. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, no more towel baths for me, then. <laughs> So you have a towel bath? Yeah, mate, just when you're out in the wild, you know, you've got a little rag, you dip it in some water, get it clean with a bit of soap that you've made from the fat of your enemies, and just get right in there in all the essential places. That way you stay clean and hygienic, but without, you know, taking too much time faffing about with baths and showers and what have you. Mm. Enemy lard, you say? Eh? Enemy lard? Oh, I mean, a lot of lard. I mean, lie, but you have to get that from the fat, boiled and skimmed down from bloody your enemies. How, does it, how long does that take? Eh? How long does it take? Funnily enough, quicker than it takes to heat a candle, <laughs> heat a ba- bucket with a candle. <laughs> Anyway, I did that out in the wilds in Belton as well. I haven't had much chance to do it here. I mean, we've, we've been in places with baths, actually. It's been quite nice. I do actually enjoy a bath, but don't tell anyone that. I'm hard. <laughs> Beelzebub, yeah. can I ask you, what happens when... Because the last time I saw Beelzebub, right, uh, we fought a big snake and then, like... Yeah. Oh, yeah? A big snake? A huge snake. Yeah? Yes. Did, you fight it, did you fight it, like, all, all as one? How many of you were there? There was, like, uh, three of us. Uh, there oh, there was three of you. Was there? Oh, and you beat the snake, did you? You had yeah. weapons, did Yeah, you? we killed the snake. Yeah, you killed the snake with your weapons and three of you. Yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. I can. Just because I, mean, uh, I beat a snake by myself with a wine I mean, bottle, we, so. we were level one at the time, so. <laughs> you were what? <laughs> <laughs> you were what? We were, level one. What like, does that mean? You know, we were just, we were Bee Gees. I thought, is that your band? Yeah. <laughs> Well, the Bee Gees? No, the level, no, level one. one. I thought that was another level. <laughs> uh, yeah. I thought that was it, yes. This is all getting really confusing. 
Well, we killed a snake, all right? Let's yes. not. <laughs> Kill yeah. it. What happened after that you killed the snake? What happened with the other guys? You know, the, there was the guy with the, oh, hello, mate, that that, that voice. <laughs> and then there was, uh, who else was there? That was it. Do you always reminisce about people in this way? Well, they yeah. sort yeah. of. They sort of went, went off on their own paths. Oh, did they? We sort of had some food in the pub the next day. Yeah. And then we, well, I took my, uh, I took Jam Jam and I, well, I traveled around. And uh, this is where I came to the city in which you found me. Do you know what, mate? Pretty much the same thing happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty un, un you know. Yeah, I'm remarkable. Yeah, no, remarkable. No, no interesting such, stories at all. Such vague, unfulfilling lives just well, wandering around Galarian. There was one time when I was in the room. Shana is taking herself off, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's, she's left this conversation. Is she's she, gone to the front of the ship. Is she taking she's a She's looking out. She's, uh, you know, sort of whimsically looking out over what's ahead, keeping an eye out. So Shania is probably looking upon the kingdom of the elves. I don't know okay. if, if I don't know if it makes you reflect uh, a little bit on uh, on how different these people who are so similar to uh, so similar to you but have such a different mm. upbringing who don't have the same kind of challenges. Um, yeah, who wouldn't have been through the same sort of things and how how close it would have been. You know how in another life perhaps Shania would have grown up um, as a surface elf. And would not have been through the torment of uh, of losing family as she did. She may not think that. She might just be thinking she's hungry. <laughs> who knows? Aya Shania, I bought you a sandwich just in case you were hungry. Oh, thank you. Yes, maybe maybe I will uh, eat it later. It's not the right moment for me. Why is that? Well, Kago, I don't know if you've noticed. <laughs> But often on these long trips, um, my mind uh, wanders, you know, to to other other parts uh, of my soul, and I find myself examining things that I did not think about when we are, you know, having more of an action-packed time. It's because the new side, isn't it? It's part of the new size, you yeah. know. I'm, you know, hungry to use it. Gets like that when you get a new shiny weapon. You yeah. start thinking about new possibilities. Yeah, yeah, new possibilities, new, new, new adventures to be getting in. Is there anything you want to talk about? Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's a, uh, you know, how Fulton he's um, he's so uh, so uh, important to him to go and find out what happened with his brother and. You know, he, it's so important that he would leave his family here, you know, and I wonder if if maybe there is something that I need to explore. You're going to go look for... You feel like leaving to go look for... Um, for, my, for my family? Yeah, is that what you say? Well, this is maybe... It's a thing that has crossed my mind. It crossed my mind the last time that we were on a, that we were on a ship. That I don't know if... I've not uh, told you this, but uh, I had a son. You what? Yeah, I... Uh, did you? I did, yeah. This, uh, I was Caragor tries to reassess what he thought Shania's age was in his head, <laughs> realises that it's completely uh, moot because drow, and then just goes, oh, right, okay, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was um, forced to uh, to uh, uh, abandon him and... Um, Many many years ago, when I when I left to come to the surface, and uh, I often wonder where where he is or what's happening to him. What's his name? Kazar. Kazar. Yeah. And you, you don't know where he went? No, no. I was sp- specific that I should not know because, well, if 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 the the people uh, where know about him from where I'd come from it would be very dangerous for him it's it is dangerous for me if I meet my own kind I'd never know whether to trust him or not that's why it's so shady about who you met back in um, back in um, you know yeah 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 so what what who's looking for him apart from you well I mean it could be any of the people of my tribe I mean the, why what did he do I mean it's, it was a long time ago. I do not know if, if if there would be anyone that would even care at this point. But certainly, when I first left, there was uh, much danger. But so much time has passed now. I'd, I do not even know if, yeah, if anyone would even probably care fine. one jot about any of the, either of us. Do dark elves, drow, 
don't not known to hold grudges for maybe centuries, are they? No, probably not. Yeah, especially probably especially not. because we have we have taken ourselves out of that society, so we are no longer, you know, even a part of it to even care. So if he's gone somewhere, literally, it could be literally anywhere. It's got to be somewhere yeah. where he would have fit in without too much question and hassle. Somewhere pretty, I don't know, accepting and something like that. Well, I, I, I suppose so. How cosmopolitan is Absalom, do you reckon? I, I, I have no idea. I've not been to this place. You think that this could be a place where I mean, it's meant it to be, the, be? The, the leading light in the world or whatever, in it, biggest city or something like that. I mean, it's going to be huge. I, I had not even thought of this before. What were his skills? What were his talents? What would it do? Karagor starting to look at this? I like don't, I d- uh, it would be impossible for me to say he was a baby when I left him. I have no idea. Oh, wow. All right. Well, I mean... That's fun. That's a fun thing. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I mean, no, literally, it is. That's a good. That's a good optimistic thing to look forward to, and that we can solve together. And we can you would help me with this. What? Yeah. yeah. I mean, ob- ob- why wouldn't I? Oh, Karko, you are uh, a true friend. I've uh, not expected this from you. Yes, I mean, obviously, I'm going to help her. Just you know, because that makes sense to do that, and that's important. Shinar gives him a hug. Oh, <clears throat> all right. Hmm. And okay. then uh, swiftly breaks it and says, "But uh, for now, we have um, we have uh, something important. We have the world to save first, yeah, before we can think about ourselves." Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You know, yeah, we'll do. do yeah, that. the world is in peril, is it not? You know, we have we have we have, we have, we have some very dangerous things happening yeah, yeah. in the world. Yeah, all right, that yeah. must. Surely take precedence so um, before that anything can progress. So, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, I will go for a rest now. I think. Okay. Okay. Um, see you later. She stalks off. <laughs> you seem much more very much pleased. The portion of our fan base who's uh, listeners podcast, so they can take the action figures of Karagor and Shania and sort of squish them together. <laughs> 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 So we move on. Uh, the journey continues. Uh, another three weeks uh, of travel it takes you along past Kyanin, down past the Five Kings Mountains. You see the great mountains that you know were Fulton's homeland. Uh, somewhere within is the city of High Helm. Um, but you don't see it from where you are. You just pass along rocky rivers, um, keeping underneath those mountains. Uh, and into the nation uh, of Andoran. The, uh, the free nation, the nation that broke away from the various different empires. Um, as you are, uh, are entering it, the river starts getting a lot busier at this point. The Selen is one of the main travel hubs uh, in the, the inner sea. So there are a lot of boats that are traveling along here, and you frequently are sort of stopping to wave at others or, or let them pass. Um, you arrive at a blockade um, at one point, where there are a couple of uh, boats that have been put pulled across the river, large sailing boats uh, of the Andoran Navy, the Grey Corsairs, uh, and they are bringing the uh, they are waving the boats through uh, a few at a time. Uh, you are stopped when you get to the front, uh, and a woman wearing a, a sort of blue jacket with um, golden epaulets on it um, leans over the side and says, "What are you hauling?" Yeah, ass people, just us. <laughs> Be people. Well, we're hauling ass, aren't we? Well, we've got any donkeys on board. What are you talking about? No, we're not carrying anything. Also, but do you have any ore left? Uh, uh, ore? Yes. How do you know? How did you know that Captain Gumbo had ore? He's like, oh, way back, old thing. friends. Yeah, yes. Old friends. He I'm gave us a lift before and he was are carrying you one of the, the beneficiaries of the awful, awful trade deals that Gumbo takes place with the <laughs> or- <laughs> Yes. <laughs> he loves that joke. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, but in answer to your question, we're not carrying anything apart from sandwiches, fish, and adventurers. And jam jam. Mm. And buckets. Okay. Yeah, we have uh, some buckets. Look, with the, uh, yes, and, we yes, have yes. some yes. rather useless buckets. And them sandwiches are mouldy. Are they? I mean, they were yeah. 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 <laughs> Well, I mean, I'd pick the bits off. Where have oh. you sailed from? Druma. Was it called Druma? No, I yeah. I write it down. Um, yeah. The, uh, there, is an, uh, there are undead vessels on Lake Incarthen. Have you encountered any trouble? Aye. Yes. Saw one, yeah, yeah. There was fawns that tried to come for us, but we managed to um, escape them. Using my arcane eye. No, we, it wasn't not, that we, didn't, we didn't use no, your arcane eye. It's my sailing skills. And we all work together apart from that one thing. I produce wind. And my arcane eye. 
Right. This is neither here nor there. <laughs> you are aware that the, uh, the transport of human cargo is illegal in Andoran. What do you mean, human do you, cargo? Do you mean slaves? slaves. Yes. Oh, no, 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 no. We don't, no, have, no. We just, we don't have any slaves. We have to ask. Oh, fair enough. Yes. It's good to uh, know. Standard policy, is it? Do you get many of them around here then? Well, it is legal in other parts of the world. It is legal in Druma. Uh, right. So we remind vessels that they may not bring them to, um, through this country. Uh, do, do you want to yeah. Yeah, well, no, not to worry with us. Yes. Uh, go ahead and give us a diplomacy check. Yes, Who Absalom is uh, recently Come just. Up, uh, Stop their slavery in Absalom. Oh, I'm not very diplomatic. 25, 14. Natural 20. Natural 20, okay. Makes up for my poor diplomacy. Your poor di- <laughs> Somehow your constant fart jokes uh, do not allay her. That wasn't a fart joke. I made wind. <laughs> <laughs> I literally made wind. Right, after you start talking about your ass, wind. it wa- was weird, Felder. It was weird. Yes, it was really weird. Very well. I saved your lives with my wind. Just be careful on. Uh, just be careful uh, going south. Um, Jellyax is still patrolling the inner sea. Um, they haven't given any trouble for a while, but uh, you can never be too careful. What's your final destination? Absalom. 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 Uh, you have many others, I'm sure. Yes. Good luck on your travels. Thank you for the heads up. What is your name? My name is uh, Tessifer. Tesla? No, Tessifer. No. How would you get that wrong? That's not what I said. No, I'm sorry. Not said. Here we hear. go. Jamie, you haven't got an arcane here to go with that arcane eye. <laughs> <laughs> you travel past and you go south. Um, you've uh, passed the city of Castlemere, um, and then you head out into the inner sea itself. After a few days of travel across the inner sea, a great island rises up out of the water in front of you. Not literally. Holy shit. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Aquaman has been busy. It did once. Uh, the god uh, Aradin did raise it up. But no, it is just there. You see the uh, the island appearing in the distance. And atop it, you see an enormous city as you begin to approach Absalom, the city at the center of the world. Right this bit. Oh no, I'm not going to read that. Uh, uh, that <laughs> is where we leave it for tonight. Yeah. Right yeah. Here, we Absalom. here we go. Absalom. Absolutely. Yeah. Absalom. It's my favourite part of the show. I get to shout out people who've given us some lovely five star reviews on iTunes. Thank you, Mad Turnips. Thank you, Ruth. Some really kind words there. And thank you, Nub Goat. Hashtag Team Philippe for life, yo. If you want to get a shout out on the show, very easy to do. Just scroll down on your phone right now. Give us five stars. Share that on iTunes. Help people to find this podcast. Help bring more danger links into our community so that we're all on board. We're all together as we race down the road to one hundred. See you next week. Crisis for the geek kind. Top geek officials admit they underestimated the hipster's defense capability. Join the geek revolution and save the galaxy. Geeks from all over the globe are joining up to fight for the future. They're doing their part. Are you? Want to know more? Join Weeby Geeks and the Geek Revolution and save the world. Service guarantees citizenship. Listen to Weeby Geeks podcast on iTunes and Stitcher or online at WeebyGeeks.net. Weeby Geeks, your voice for the Geek Revolution. Want to know more? <laughs>